Let's do a quick review of what we've looked at in the last couple videos so that we can position ourselves for one more piece of learning. We've been talking about Boolean masks and how we apply them and use them really depends on the type of question that we're being asked. So if we look at this first question, what are the even numbers in this grid that are greater than 50? Well, then when we make our mask, as we see right here in cell 21, and then apply it on the existing array, in this case, because we have the same shape as the original structure, we can just broadcast that Boolean mask over the other array, we simply get the numbers and they get returned as a vector. But we might also want to use a Boolean mask to filter rows. So in this case, the question is, which rows end in an even number? You know, we're kind of interested in these ones right here. Well, then when we make our Boolean mask, we apply some slicing. So in this way, we're, our true-false question is being asked on a portion of the original structure. And so then when we make our mask, of course, this shape uh, isn't the exact same size. But of course, because it's still, you know, uh, uh, stretchable, right, it can be broadcast uh, over the rows here with the slicing to answer the question which rows end in uh, an even number. Okay, but we could have a number que another question which is the how many question. Simply how many uh, you know numbers are even, and you know we can keep it and uh, greater than fifty. Okay, so in this case, it's not what are the numbers, it's how many. So we're thinking about a count here. Okay, and I'm going to take this even mask and we'll just play, play with it down below here. Okay, and refresh that. Well, when we take a look again at this even mask against the data, we have our series of true and falses. Um, and the shape again is the same as the grid because we're applying the mask to the entire grid. Here, what we need to do is simply count the trues, right? Because if we count the trues, that's your how many. There are two, and we see there are uh, two trues in this list. Well, in Python, we would say that falses would result, they're, they're zeros, right? And then trues would be non-zeros. And there's a wonderful method in NumPy called count non-zeros, which is like counting, in this case, trues. So if I, uh, off the MP, uh, NumPy library or module, I count underscore non-zero. And here we can simply pass it our mask, right? Because there is where we have our trues and falses. And of course, it counts to overall. Keeping in mind, though, uh, we can always play on an axis. So here I'm not providing an axis. So of course, the count is two overall. But if we provide this extra argument, for example, axis equals zero, we're, we're going row wise. And now we would see counting the even numbers down, right? Uh, sorry, counting the trues down. So we see one here, none in the second, one here, and none in the fourth. And of course, if we go across column wise, we can count the number of uh, trues um, by um, each row column-wise, right? Good, so uh, the count non-zero is just a fantastic way to solve the how many question. And depending on how you want to answer that question, you may use an axis to go by row or column, or you might simply want to look overall the entire structure and uh, do your counting. Okay, so now we're going to put some of these pieces together with a couple problems so that we can see how we can problem solve with all the pieces working together.